Hello, this is Sylvia of cpdbox.com and in this video I will be discussing the accounting for subsequent expenditures in agriculture and I mean food for animals, vaccines, pesticides, fertilizers and all costs that you can incur in agricultural activities. Today's question comes from Y from Australia. I work for a company that owns a few sheep farms. We are breeding sheep for sale and for the purpose of the production of sheep products like milk, cheese and other. I know that we must apply IS41 agriculture for accounting of sheep and remeasure them at fair value less cost to sell at the end of the reporting period. But how shall we account for expenses like food for animals and veterinary costs? I'm sure that many accountants working in agricultural activities will appreciate the answer to these questions and not only if you work in the animal production, but a similar question pop out in the companies working with plants like palm trees, wheat, vineyards. So in fact my answer will not only relate to the animal food and veterinary expenses, but also to fertilizers, pesticides, removing the weed and other related expenses. So how shall we account for these costs? Well, the trouble is that the standard IS41 agriculture is silent on this topic. There are no exact rules on how to present these costs. Why? Well, I read the basis for conclusion related to IS41, and that's a document explaining why the standard creators created the rules as they are. And this basis of conclusion says that it is not necessary to make the rules about the subsequent expenditures in agricultural activities. Well, because biological assets need to be remeasured to their fair value less cost to sell with all changes in profit or loss. And therefore, it doesn't matter how you treat the subsequent expenditure because it will always end up in profit or loss anyway. It is true that the effect on profit or loss will always be the same. I will show you in the short illustration later. But the presentation of the individual expenses in your profit or loss is totally affected by the way of how you treat the subsequent expenditure. And also your cash flow statement will look differently. In any case, it's you who need to set the accounting policy of treating as a subsequent expenditure. And basically you have two options. Option number one, put all subsequent expenditure in profit or loss directly. Or option number two, capitalize the subsequent expenditure in the carrying amount of your biological assets. So let me explain. Under the first option, you would treat all the expenses in profit or loss. And this is very simple and very easy way of doing the things. But in my opinion, it's not ideal because in this case, you would show big expenses in your profit or loss statement. And on the other hand, you would show big increase in fair value of your biological assets. But what's wrong with that? Okay, the fair value of your biological assets increases not only due to external market changes, but also due to your activities like feeding the animals, taking care of them, etc. So if you put all expenses in profit or loss, you're effectively presenting the increase in fair value in one bunch, regardless its source or reason. Well, sure, for some assets, you need to add additional disclosures about the fair value change due to price change or physical change. But this disclosure is just encouraged. It's not obligatory. So under the second option, you would add the expenses to the carrying amount of the biological asset. And this way, you do not show big expenses for agricultural activity in your profit or loss. And also you show smaller increase in fair value of your biological assets. In my opinion, this method reflects the fair value change is better than the first method, but it's more demanding and challenging. So let me just shortly illustrate and compare. Well, let's say that the fair value of your herd of sheep was 1000 currency units at the end of the year one. And in the year two, you spent 200 currency units for sheep, food supplements, vet and other living and breeding expenses. And the fair value of your herd is 1,500 at the end of the year two, right? So under the option one, when you put all expenses in profit or loss, 
Your journal entry for the subsequent expenditure would be debit profit or loss, some operating expenses with 200 currency units, and credit suppliers bank account, which is also 200 currency units. And the journal entry to remeasure the carrying amount of sheep herd to fair value less cost to sell at the end of year two would be debit biological assets, 500 currency units. Well, why 500? Because the fair value less cost to sell is 1,500 at the end of the year two and 1,000 at the end of the year one. So the difference is 500. You didn't add anything to the carrying amount of biological assets during the year. And you would credit some fair value change in profit or loss with 500 currency units. So the net effect in your profit or loss is just 300 currency units, which is the full gain from remeasurement of 500 less the subsequent expenses of 200. Well, if you use the option two in which you capitalize all the expenses, then the journal entry for the subsequent expenditure would be to debit biological assets with 200, not profit or loss, biological assets and credit suppliers or bank account with 200. And then your journal entry to remeasure the carrying amount of sheep herd to fair value less cost to sell at the end of the year two would be debit biological assets with 300 only because the fair value less cost to sell at the end of the year two is 1,500 and your carrying amount is 1,200 because you added 200 as a subsequent expense and you would credit the fair value change in profit or loss with 300. So the net effect of profit or loss is 300, which is just gain from remeasurement, is the same as with option one, just the presentation is different. And now, finally, let me outline the optimal process of setting the accounting policy for subsequent expenditures. So if you want to take it easy, regardless the presentation in profit or loss, then just go for option one and put all the expenses in profit or loss as they arise. And if you care more about the presentation of your profit or loss and cash flows, then you can try looking at IS2 or IS16 for some guidance. Well, I know these standards do not apply to biological assets, but you can use them as your help in developing your own policy. So you can just decide that all the expenses that maintain the assets are expensed. For example, routine vaccinations of animals, pesticides with plants, etc. And all the expenses that help increase the yield or outcome of the biological assets would be capitalized. For example, food supplements or fertilizers. Well, this is quite challenging because here you need to apply your judgment to determine which costs to capitalize and which to expense. That's it for today. The information in this video is not a substitute from a professional judgment of CPA of your own situation and circumstances, and you should consult CPA or other qualified professional. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please sign up for my channel if you liked it. And you can also sign up for my free newsletter with loads of articles, videos. We offer courses and other resources. So please share this video with your friends and colleagues if you think they might benefit from it. And stay tuned. Bye.